This section is called quantitative information from balanced equations. We will need this throughout the course. It's also known as stoichiometric calculations. I'm presenting it maybe not quite like that, but I'm going to start by talking about the actual method. The method has three steps, one, two, three. The first step is what you do is you convert grams to moles. And again, I say if necessary, you need to use the molecular weight that you can obtain from any place you can find it. The second step, this was step one, the second step is step two, and that's where we're going to use a mole ratio. We'll talk about that on the next slide. And in step three, we're going to turn those moles to grams if necessary. People say memorize. You simply can't. You have to think your way through. I used colors here. Desired is in blue. Given is in red. Pause this video. Take a look at this picture. See if it makes sense to you. Here's what we have from your text. Notice there's many ways to say the exact same thing. So before we do a calculation, two things to point out. We talked about conservation of matter in chapter two, and here we show the two reactants, potassium and water. If we crunch our numbers, they'll be 114 grams. Here we show our two products, potassium hydroxide and hydrogen. If we crunch our number, there will again be 114 grams. That holds true for any balanced chemical equation. On the bottom, I have the equation nitrogen plus hydrogen goes to form ammonia. And it has to do with ratios. I found students are really struggling with this. Not everybody, but depends on what your K through 12 teachers taught you. We never write the number one, but we have one nitrogen. The ratio is three hydrogens and that produces two ammonia. So it says, when one mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen, two moles of ammonia would be produced. What if instead I use two moles of nitrogen? What would happen? Well, I would need to have six moles of hydrogen for this reaction to occur, and I would be producing four moles of ammonia. That's what I mean by ratio. You'll use it also in 1220. So again, pause. If this is not making sense, ask some questions. Now, we do a calculation, and I call it finding product. So we're trying to find hydrogen and potassium hydroxide. We are given grams of potassium. And I put in red excess water. We'll talk about limiting reagents in the last section. But when you have an excess of a reactant or reactions, it assumes that the reaction will go to completion. What we want to do here is find two different products. We want to find how much KOH can we make. We want to find how much hydrogen can we make. We do it separately. Before I fill in the numbers, pause this video and look at dimension analysis. See how grams of potassium turn into moles of potassium that turn into moles of potassium hydroxide. That's probably critical to getting this problem right. Now let's put in the numbers. We have three grams of potassium, and when I look at my balanced chemical equation, I see not one mole of potassium, Oh, I see, this is step one, I always do this. Step one says, use the molecular mass. One mole of potassium, 39.10 grams. Maybe you'll make the same mistake, and it's okay to make mistakes, that's how we learn. Now we have moles of potassium. As I look at the balanced chemical equation for step two, I see the stoichiometric coefficient of two for potassium, and I see the stoichiometric of two for potassium hydroxide. That's our mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. Now finally, there's step three, where we turn those moles of potassium hydroxide. I need to use a one here because every one mole of potassium hydroxide weighs 56.11 grams. And when I work the math out, 4.304 grams of potassium hydroxide. Now that's not truly the correct answer. We have two significant figures, so our answer is 4.3. Be very careful in your lab work because you don't get credit unless you have the 
proper number of significant figures. Okay, so that's finding the grams of potassium. Now, what if we go to number two? What if we want to find the grams of hydrogen? Take a moment and pause. Notice the units, how they are set up. Grams of potassium to moles of potassium, moles of potassium to moles of hydrogen, moles of hydrogen to grams of hydrogen. Now I'll fill in the numbers. 3.0 grams of potassium, and again from the periodic table, 39.10 grams of potassium for every one mole. That is step one. Notice how they match. For step two, I have in the equation, once again, my two moles of potassium. And now in terms of the hydrogen, I have the understood number one. One mole of hydrogen for every two moles of potassium. The other reason to do this is Hydrogen is a diatomic molecule. You need to use the mass of hydrogen, 2.016. When I crunch my numbers through, 0 0.0773 grams of hydrogen, I need those two significant figures. So again, that rule from chapter one comes into play. So again, please practice and please be careful on your labs because you can become very frustrated not earning credit, but you need to follow significant figure rules for that. What did I ignore here? I ignored all the numbers for the conversion factors. Again, conversion factors play no role whatsoever in any of these calculations. So this is where we are finding product. We also could be asked for moles or grams. You know, this was really taking it all the way with that first example. So let's kind of back up a little bit. We've got an equation where we have potassium chlorate going to form potassium chloride and the molecule oxygen. There are three questions being asked, one, two, and three. And let's attack the first one first. Notice I put down all the units again. If you're struggling how to do a setup, first look at this and then place the numbers in. If I look at my potassium chlorate, I have 26.5 grams of potassium chlorate. I find they weigh 22.55 grams. I say Google, it's much faster than doing the math yourself. And this is for every one mole of potassium chlorate. Again, this is step one. When I look at the next part, I need to use a mole ratio. I see two moles of KClO3 for every one mole of oxygen. Oh, oh, oh. Is this a balanced equation? No, you need to balance the equation. Is it okay to make a mistake? I think so, because now you'll remember it and make fun of me. What we need is the number three here, and that will mean there will be the number three in front of the moles of oxygen. We come up with 0 0.312 moles of O2. Again, oh, three significant figures here, we're safe because we were really teaching about balancing the equation and doing steps one and two. Now, what it says here is how many grams of oxygen were produced. You could start from the beginning or you could take that 0.312 moles of oxygen. And again, the reason to do this is oxygen is a diatomic molecule. 32 grams of oxygen for every molecule of oxygen, 9.987 grams of oxygen, and we have two significant figures. So again, three significant figures. Please pay attention to the sig figs. So we've done everything with oxygen, but now they want to know how much potassium chloride is produced. So this is kind of like our sixth calculation here. And I'm hoping that you can visualize how to set it up. If you can't, I've set up the units for you. It says moles of KClO3. I never got that. I'm putting down the number 0 0.208. Where did that come from? Well, if I took 26.5 grams and I said one mole was 122.55 grams, 
that would give me the value 0.208. I'm trying to make you think because it's not just plug and chug. It is really a thought process that has to take place. And then I have two moles of KCl for every two moles of KClO3. I have 74.55 grams of KCl for every mole of KCl. And when I crunch my numbers out, 15.5 grams of KCl. Expect one or two of these on a midterm. You've got to be able to look at the problem, take the data, set it up, and solve the problem. What do I have left? Well, they can also ask you to find the reactant. Please know it can't just be about a product. Once you have those stoichiometric coefficients, you can go in any direction. That is the reason for this problem. It says I'm taking methane with a one, chlorine with a three, CHCl3 with a one to make three HCLs. I have a balanced equation. I've also set up the units. When I would write my own exam, I honestly would have a question where you had four different options for units for a student to pick the right one because you've got to get that part down before you can do a problem that has actual numbers. So I need to produce 0.67 moles of chloroform. I will start with that. Students often say, I don't know where to start. I want to say start with the number they give you. If they give you the moles of chloroform and you're looking for the grams of chlorine, you've got to use the mole ratio. So I wrote down here step two. In order to know the numbers in front, you look at the balanced equation. There are three Cl2s for every one CHCl3. And then finally, one mole of Cl2 for every 70.90 grams of chlorine. Again, a diatomic molecule. Oh, I've got a spell. We're going to just do it this way. Diatomic molecule. Again, trying to show you as much as I can in a problem. I come up with 142.50. I see that my input is two significant figures. I need two significant figures as a product. It's probably safest to write it as 1.4 times 10 squared grams of chlorine. These will take practice. And again, many people wait until the weekend before the exam to start working. I don't think it's a good idea. It will take you a while to master these. I've put down two practice midterm questions here. And essentially, when you see a new problem, it's seeing a new problem. You've got to analyze what's there. I will work these during our Zoom lectures. I will post the, pro you know, how do you work the problem in our Carmen page for that chapter once we have finished the chapter. Please ask questions. Don't use this online class as a reason to say, I can't get my questions answered. We're here to help you and we want to help you.